بالله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه القول اللهم آمين. We reached the third session of speaking about Isa عليه السلام Jesus the son of Mary and we want to just recap the history of the birth of Isa عليه السلام his miracles his life uh, his actions, his followers, when, what happened to him at the end, when is he going to return, and some of his statements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, documents for us in the Quran, things that he's going to say in a dialogue between him and the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his creator and our creator. When we cap on the birth first, as we know that the birth of Jesus, peace be unto him, was a miraculous birth. But it was not an unusual birth in the sense that the one who created him and created everything else from nothing and created Adam from mud and created Hawa, his wife, from a father, if you will, which is our forefather Adam. So he created a female from a male. And then he created Jesus, peace be unto him, from a female. And he created Adam from nothing. And he created everybody else from a male and a female. So the rules of the universe, as we mentioned, do not apply to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the one and the only one. Second, we mentioned the birth of Isa alayhi salam when he called onto his mother as she resorted to the trunk of a palm tree. And she was in a state of fear, and she was hungry, and she was thirsty. And then when she delivered, Jesus peace be unto him, he called his mother as a miraculous speaking, ability to speak, and it was not on his own, but rather by the will of his Creator, the Almighty God. And he called on to comfort her, he said, وَلَا تَخَافِي وَلَا تَحْزَنِي Do not be saddened and do not be afraid. In other words, do not be afraid of that which you're going to encounter, the questions that you're going to be asked as to how you've managed to get pregnant and deliver a baby without the interference of a man, without being married. So at that point, the Almighty commanded her to vow not to speak to anyone and then just like these miracles one after the other are taking place there has to be another miracle in order to explain to people that this pregnancy and this delivery is the decree of the Almighty God and the purpose of which as the Archangel Gabriel stated to Mary when he delivered the news to her that she's gonna bear a child and not like any child but rather a prophet, a messenger, one of the mighty messengers of the Almighty and that this messenger is ayah, when they jalahu ayatan, rahma wa ayah. Meaning that it's going to be an act of mercy. Mercy in the sense that he's going to be teaching people the concept of tawheed, the unity and the oneness of one and only one creator. The one and the only one that is rightfully worshipped. The one and the only one in his hand is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. The one and the only one who creates, who sustains, who is worthy of worship. This is the mercy. Ayah means that his birth is going to be a miraculous birth. His ability to speak in the cradle as soon as he was born to his mother. And then later when he confronted the Israelites at the time, these are the people that Jesus, peace be unto him, was sent to after Moses, peace be unto him, he was sent to the Israelites. So the first thing they said, oh Mary, they looked at her suspiciously, where did you get that from? مَا كَانَ أَبُوكِ your father was not a man to have caused mischief or to commit sins. Neither your mother was a prostitute, meaning that one would bear children without being married. So how did you manage to have this? Ya Ukhta Harun, Harun is a prophet. And as we know that Harun is the brother of Aaron, is the brother of Moses. They were sent at the same time to Egypt to the Pharaoh and his people. And they would compare Mary and her deeds to Aaron in his deeds because he's known to be among the Israelites a very righteous man, a messenger, a prophet from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ukhta Harun, ma kana abuki ra'a sawin wa ma kanat ummuki baghiya. Then at that point, she did exactly as she was commanded. She points to the baby. So now they're wondering. And this is evidence against them because they're wondering, why would you point to your baby that was just born? How can we speak to him? فَأَشَارَتِ لَيْهِ قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَهْدِ صَبِيَّةِ When she pointed to him, they said, well, how are we going to speak to a person, to a baby who was just born? Now, Jesus, peace be unto him, is speaking. And he's articulating. He's not doing any type of talk. 
قال إني عبد الله. To set the record straight, the first words that uttered from the mouth of Jesus, peace be unto him, to say, I am عبد الله. عبد الله means the slave of the Almighty. And we all choose to be slaves to either our Creator or any other entity. If we choose to be slaves to our Creator, there's an act of honor that with every prostration, with every bowing down, with every act of worship, with, it, with every act of piety and righteousness, the Almighty rewards us more and elevates us in ranks in paradise. However, when we choose to be slaves to any other entity, we are degrading ourselves. We are humiliating ourselves. So these are words that Jesus, peace be unto him, and every other prophet were proud to utter, to say, Inni Abdullah. Here begin, we begin to mention the other miracles that the Almighty God has empowered Jesus, peace be unto him, with. And a miracle, by definition, is an extraordinary ability by the will of God that is sent with a prophet to support them and to demonstrate that they are a messenger from God. And to challenge people with these miracles. So, for example, Moses, peace be unto him, was able to split the sea with the will of God by striking it with the stick. So that's a miracle for mankind that no one can challenge. Similarly, Jesus, peace be unto him, came with many miracles. So he has given me the New Testament, the Injil, the Torah, uh, the Injil, and he has made me a prophet. And he has made me blessed. So for someone to be blessed, meaning that they receive these blessings from their Creator. Mubarak, blessed means that one who has tremendous benefits that he can offer to other people. And what is more of a benefit than a prophet to teach people the unity of the oneness of the Almighty God? To teach them the wisdom, to teach them the guidance, the way of life, to teach them that which will enable them to escape the wrath of the Almighty and to embrace or to have a share of His mercy and enter paradise. And he has commanded me to pray. And to pay charity and to purify myself. And to treat my mother with the highest levels of birr, means that the highest levels of acts of guidance, uh, of kindness, and graciousness, and piety, and righteousness. And then he mentions the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent him with, and this was demonstrated through his lifetime and his childhood. So after Jesus, peace be upon him, spoke in the cradle, he lived an ordinary life, meaning that he would nurse, and he would relieve himself, just like any other baby, and he would play with the other children. However, the Almighty has also bestowed other bounties upon him, which are signs that he's going to be a man of message, a man of revelation. So when he would play with the children, he would tell them, I can tell you what you ate today, and I can tell you what you store in your house today. And so he would do that. Now that he was sent to the Israelites, many of which were corrupted at the time, meaning that they engaged in activities like drinking, fornicating, gambling, and other unlawful activities. And typically people like that are people of interest. They are making money off of sale and alcohol. They are making money off of prostitution. They are making money off of illegal activities, just like we have today. People who open the casinos and people who propagate, you know, uh, premarital sexual activities and homosexuality and drugs and alcohol. If you try to tell these people that these matters are unlawful and illegal, you will find uh, a tremendous backlash, and you would find that people are, you know, gonna, uh, you know, file, if you will, take very, very severe actions because now you are compromising their ability to make money off of these legal activities. These are the challenges that Jesus, peace be unto him, and his mother Mary. Jesus was, of course, the prophet who was last before the final, the seal prophet, which is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his mother was the most righteous woman to walk the face of the earth. So these two people were known for their righteousness and their, their devotion and their piety and, you know, their good character. So now people of interest, those who are corrupted, they began to fight back. And now, Jesus, peace be unto him, and his mother have resorted, escaped for their lives, to an oasis. Until the age of 30, when the Almighty has revealed upon Jesus, peace be unto him, the Injil, the Bible, in its authentic and original form, and they began to promulgate the message of Islam. And I say the message of Islam because all of the messages that every prophet and every messenger was sent with is the message of Islam. And the word Islam means to submit. 
to surrender to the one and the only one God, and to submit to the guidance and the wisdom that the Almighty God has revealed in his respective revelations at different times. So now the Israelites are going to, the corrupted ones among them, those who disbelieved in him, people of interest, they began to conspire with the ruler of Jerusalem. And they wanted to kill him. And they would basically, you know, lobby for that. And they would, you know, influence and they would pressure. And they would entice this ruler to go after Jesus, peace be on him, and allow them to crucify Jesus, peace be on him. Before we get to that final uh, supper, if you will, we talk a little bit more about his miracles. In Arabic, the word Jesus or Christ means al Masih. And this word comes from the fact that, or from the word in Arabic, which means Masaha, means to wipe on. So some of the miracles that Jesus, peace be on him, has come with is to be able to cure the blind. So he would wipe with his hand on the eyes of the blind, and he or she would immediately be able to see. Those who also were afflicted with leprosy, he would wipe on their skins, and then they immediately would be cured, and so on and so forth. Some of the other miracles that he'd come with, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and I would create from mud the shape of a bird. So I blow on it, then it becomes a bird by the will of the Almighty God. And every one of these statements, Jesus peace be upon him is saying, this is not by my free will. This is not by way of my abilities. This is by way of the Almighty God, just like every other prophet who had come with miracles that they could not do anything, anything on their own whatsoever. They could not come with any miracles whatsoever except by the will of God. Just like Abraham, the forefather of most of the prophets, when he asked the Almighty to show him how he would bring the dead back, he said, take four birds, cut them up, mix them up, and put, e put each part of this mix, if you will, on top of a mountain. And then call them and they'll come to you. So that's another way of showing the powers of the Almighty. And this is a greater level of power that the Almighty God is passing on to his prophets to be able to demonstrate to people that we are not performing magic, that we are not just ordinary people, we are people of messengerhood, we are people of prophethood. So that's another miracle that he's able to shape the mud into birds and then blow into it and then this become a flying bird, a living bird. A third of which, being able to resurrect the dead. For example, he passes by a grave and this mother who lost her only daughter, she had just one single daughter, and this daughter passed away. So she agonized so much over her that she vowed to sit on her grave until her daughter is resurrected or the mother herself will die. So Jesus, peace be upon him, would pass by this grave, and he would see this mother, you know, crying and, and, and wailing and agonizing over her daughter. So he says, what is the matter with you? So she recognized him. She said, Ya Nabi Allah. He said, O Prophet of Allah, would you supplicate to the Almighty, to your God and my God, to resurrect my child? So Jesus, peace be upon him, stood up and he prayed two rakahs, means that he prayed his prayers, and he supplicated to the Almighty, and then he looked at the grave and he called the daughter. He said, come on out. The first time the grave shook. He said, come on out. The second time the grave shook. He called her the third time and then the grave split open and she emerged from the grave. And when the daughter emerged from the grave, her hair was gray and her eyebrows were gray and her eye uh, lashes were also gray. So he asked her, he said, I called you the first time and then the second and the third. Why did you come out so slowly? She said, by Allah, when you first called me, an angel came to me and he put my creation together. He put my body together. Because the body obviously, you know, uh, decomposes under the ground. The second time he called me, the angel blew the soul into my body. And the third time you called me, I was confused. I wasn't sure if this is the second blow in the trumpet or that you call him. So I thought it was the second blow on the trumpet, and then in a state of fear, my hair and my eyebrows and my eyelashes have turned gray. And then she looked at her mother, and she said, oh my mother, why are you agonizing? This is the decree, this is the will of the Almighty. Why not persevere in patience? Why do you want me? 
to go through the agonizing process of the soul parting ways with the body. And to, so she gives you the advice to persevere in patience. She looks at Jesus, peace be on him, she said, Oh Jesus, supplicate to the Almighty to put me back into the grave. So he did, and she went back into the grave. And then Jesus, peace be on him, looked at her mother, and he said, Now are you going to part ways with this grave? You asked me to bring your daughter back to life. She did come out, and now she's back in. She said, yes, I will perceive you in patience, and she left. So this is another, this is the first incident where he was called on to bring the dead from the grave. So we can see he is a man of righteousness. He's a man of miracles. He's a man who worshiped his creator, as he commands us to do, as the Almighty God reports in the Quran, and Allah rabbi wa rabbakum that he came to propagate the message of Islam to call people to worship the one and the only one God, our Lord and his Lord. So he never at any given point claimed to be a God, claimed to be a deity, claimed to be a son of God, one of the three or any of that. So now the Israelites are the corrupted ones among them who disbelieved in him and wanted him dead. They got the permission of the ruler to search after him. And they would ask around, and finally they found him sitting with the disciples. Before they reached him, the disciples, there were about 12 of them, who asked Jesus, peace be on to him, to ask the Almighty after fasting 30 days. So on the 31st day, just like we fast now, during the month of Ramadan, on the 31st day, they asked Jesus to call unto his Lord to descend a feast from the heavens. He said, Ittaqullah, you know, have piety and righteousness, why would you ask for such a thing after you've seen what you've seen from the miracles? They said, we want to be witnesses for this feast. And we want our hearts to be comforted. And we want it to be a Eid, a festivity, an active celebration for us after this long fast. So the Almighty God, so Jesus, peace be upon him, supplicates to the Almighty God, who descends this feast upon them. Of course, initially they were fearful to eat from it. So when the poor and the needy ate from it, and everyone who had an illness or an ailment was cured because this is a blessed feast, it's not just any other feast. Then everybody began to eat from it. So now, those who are persecuted and pursuing Jesus, peace be upon him, they catch up with him in a home inside an oasis. And now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, فَلَمَّا أَحَسَّ عِيسَ مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ قَالَ مَنْ أَنصَارِي إِلَى اللَّهِ So when Jesus felt that this is it, they are determined to assassinate him, to kill him, he called unto the disciples around and he said, Who are my victorious ones to make the message of the Almighty, the All High? The disciples said, We are the victorious of the Almighty God. So he said, Who will take my place and be resurrected at the same status with me on Judgment Day? A young man, the youngest one from among the disciples, he said, I will take your place. He told them to sit down. He asked the question a second time. The same young man answered. A third time, the same young man raised his hand. He said, be it, you take my place, and the Almighty God caused this young man to look like Jesus, peace be upon him. Just another miracle in the happening, or in the making. So now, the roof of the house opens up. The angels descend. Jesus, peace be upon him, is put to sleep. And he ascends to the heavens in front of the disciples. The Israelites catch, you know, catch up with the disciples and they look at this young man who was made to look like Jesus, peace be upon him. So they arrest him, they handcuff him, they tie him, they put thorns to humiliate him over his head, they put him on the cross and they raise him, and then who sees that? Mary, peace be upon her. So Mary sees that, she thinks this is her son Jesus. But later she learns that this is not her son Jesus. So anyways, as if this is taking place in front of his mother, until later she learns, you know, Allah ta'ala alam, that this is not her son. So now Jesus is raised to the heavens with his body and soul, and has not died the final death. This is, from an Islamic perspective, the belief, the creed of the Muslims, that Jesus, peace be upon him, will return again at the end of time. And this is one of the greater signs of judgment day. So the purpose of the coming of Jesus, peace be upon him, is as a prophet to teach people Islam, to teach people how to worship God, to teach people the book, the divine revelation, to teach people, uh, people the wisdom, and to support what he says with miracles, and also to give the good news of the coming of a sealed prophet. And our prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, who was sent to all mankind,
He says, "Ana awla nas I am the one who has the ability to lay a claim as the one who's closest to Jesus peace be upon him because I came immediately after him. Because I came immediately. Now there were no prophets and messengers between Jesus and Muhammad peace be upon them all. So he came to give the good news in you know in the Bible that there will be a sealed prophet coming after him and that he must go so that sealed prophet will come. So now, Jesus, peace be upon him, will return again because we believe he has not died. He's living up in the heavens. So when he returns, the purpose of his return is to set the record straight. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنُنَّ, ليؤمنن بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ That all of the people of the book shall believe in him before one interpretation, before this person who is a member of the people of the book dies, or when Jesus, peace be upon him, returns and they see him, then they will believe in him. And at that time, he will break the cross. This may come as a surprise to some of the listeners. He will break the, car, the cross. He will kill the pig. And he will not accept from the Christians and the Jews except that they would submit to the seal prophet, they would submit to the Quran, they would submit to the way of, the, the way of life that the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has come with. And then another purpose for his return is that he will kill the false messiah, the one-eyed false messiah who will come and he will be also supported with some miracles and some people will follow him because of his abilities and the treasures and the wealth that he will have and the powers that he will have. Some people will follow him so Jesus, peace be unto him, will seek after him and will chase him and he will catch up with him in Bilad al-Sham. And at that point, near the Mount of Tur, which is the mount that the Almighty God spoke to Moses, peace be upon him, uh, you know, near that mountain, he will catch up with him, and with the barakah, the blessings of the supplication of Jesus, peace be upon him, the false Messiah will perish. And then, Jesus, peace be upon him, will resort with his followers to the Mount of Tur, the mountain that, again, Jesus, uh, Moses, peace be upon him, was spoken to by the Almighty God. Why? Because at that time, Gog and Magog, the two great tribes, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, I narrate these verses from the Quran because these are the words of the Almighty God. So if I err in the translation or the interpretation, at least we have the authentic and the divine revelation of the Almighty God that we can always reference. These people, though these two great tribes, or tribes that are great in numbers, will cause so much mischief on the face of the earth to the extent that Jesus, peace be upon him, and his followers will not be able to fight back. Then Jesus will supplicate against them using the help of the Almighty God, and they will be inflicted with a disease that they will die all at the same time. So Jesus will live for a part of, you know, rest of his life on the face of the earth and then his mission will be over. So when he returns, he's not returning as a new messenger. He's returning as a follower to the final and the seal revelation from God and that is the Quran. As a follower to the one and the seal prophet from God and that is Muhammad, peace be upon him. So this is what we told in the Quran and in the Sunnah means that the statements of the prophet, peace be upon him. Furthermore, the Quran also tells us what Jesus, peace be upon him, is going to speak. He's going to say when he speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him as he says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَىٰ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهَيْنِ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him to question, not because he's guilty, but rather, you know, just to tell people in front of everyone who will be resurrected on Judgment Day, did you tell people to take you and your mother as two deities aside from the Almighty God? He will immediately say Subhanak. And the word Subhanak means it's an act of negation for someone to make a claim or to make a statement, to be attributed to the Almighty that is unsuitable. In other words, it's not for me as a creation of the Almighty God to claim that I'm a God or a son of God. Or my mother is, you know, uh, the mother of God or the wife of God, or any of that, because these terms apply to human beings. They do not apply to the Creator. So he would say, Subhanak. That's the first thing he would say. I did not tell them except that which you've commanded me to say. 
and Abu Rabbi Warabdakum worship the Almighty God. My Lord, right? The word, word uh, Rabb in Arabic means that the creator, the sustainer, and the cherisher. Abudu worship means take him as a deity because he's the one and the only deity that is worthy of worship, that is rightfully worshipped. Why? Because he's the owner and the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that's in between. And I was a witness over them so long that I was alive. When you cause me to die, that's the first death. When you cause me to die, means when you put me to sleep, the word wafa in Arabic means to put to sleep or to die. So the word wafa is mentioned in the Quran in this context. When you cause me to die, you are the one who is watchful over them, and indeed you are watchful over everyone. You're the one who knows that which is obviously manifest, that which is a secret, and that which is even more hidden. So we see here from you know the divine revelation of God that Jesus, peace be unto him, had a mother and had a lineage in the family that goes all the way back to David, Dawood and that he had cousins in his lifetime, and that Zechariah, uh, peace be unto him, was, you know, the husband of his aunt. And, you know, Mary was, you know, uh, obviously his mother, and she had her relatives, and the only, you know, supernatural incident that happened to Mary is that the fact that she got pregnant with Jesus, peace be unto him, when the archangel Gabriel came and he blew the, you know, in, 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 the, in the opening of her gown, and he blew the seed for Jesus peace be unto him, and this is what we say in the Arabic language as Kalimatullah, that this was decree as a direct word, as a direct command from the Almighty God. So the concept of Trinity and the concept of the Son of God and the concept of that's all a man-made concept, it's an invented concept that has no true basis, not from a divine perspective, not from a logical perspective, not from a factual perspective, even those who make such claims are in dispute among themselves. Just like we saw in the incident of this young lady emerging from the grave when, when she thinks or she thought that she heard the second blow in the trumpet, which is the blow when all mankind will be resurrected, all of the world of angels will be resurrected, all of the world of jinn, another creation of the Almighty God, will be resurrected. It caused her to grow gray hair. So imagine the display that the Almighty God is telling those different sects that have disagreed among them, among themselves, over who Jesus was. More to those who disbelieved in the Almighty and attributed his son to him. Uh, from the display of a great day, in the chapter that we mentioned, Tower of Mary, the Almighty God tells us how nature reacts to such a claim. We look at it as inanimate objects, but in reality, everything has a language. Everything in creation speaks. Everything in creation communicates. So, in this, on these verses, the Almighty God says, uh, that the heavens and the earth will almost collapse on itself, will split open, will come tumbling down, that they would attribute to Ar Rahman, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the cherisher, the all gracious, they would attribute a son to him. It's not for the old grace to take a son that is made out of dust, just like the rest of us. Everyone that is in the heavens and everyone that's on earth shall come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a slave, helpless, defenseless. And the decree on that day is to the king of all kings, to the Almighty, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask the Almighty God to cause us to benefit from these words, to benefit from the guidance, to enable us to use our intellects and our thought process and our minds to find the truth and to search for the truth and to apply the truth and to do that which pleases him in this life while the opportunity and the door of opportunity is wide open for us. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa sallam 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 جزاكم الله خيرا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته تفضل شيخ